Hi. So since I had to come up here and turn one of the water tanks on to fill the line, um, I thought I'd give you a little walkthrough of our plumbing situation up here. It's been about a year since we set these tanks, a little less. Um, and so I'll show you what we've got going on. And it's still a work in progress, but the name of the game off grid is you just kind of get things as finished as you can, when you can, and then you come back, typically. It's not my favorite way of doing things, but it just seems to be how things work out. And uh, my goal is to interrupt that cycle at some point. Anyway, I digress. Here's our plumbing at our water tanks. All right, so we pump water way up to the top of our property from about midway down elevation wise through this three quarter inch line. People say that you um, have to worry about line friction when you're going up vertically as high as we are with this diameter pipe. We haven't had any problems, so I'm very grateful for that. We um, <coughs> have it right now hooked up to this garden hose. You can see there's actually a series of fittings there. And uh, so we did this because last year we were out running the drought. So the water goes through the hose, past the child, up to the top of this 5,000 gallon tank. And we can, and we have hooked up water tanks um, B and C with uh, hoses as well. Very soon now we're gonna be replacing the hose fittings with actual PVC pipe, and that'll be nice. Um, but what I really wanna show you is how we have it set up to go to the house. So we have a two inch line coming out of each one of these with a heavy duty valve at the bottom. Kind of mix and match because you have to work with what you can find at the hardware store in any given moment. Um, and so when you turn these on, and I just learned this, unfortunately, I didn't have to learn it the hard way. When you turn these on, you have to go very slowly, otherwise you create a water hammer which can cause things to explode. So when you're turning on your, your valves, especially big heavy duty ones with a ton of pressure on them, like these, um, be careful and go slowly. Now I noticed as I was filming, I just want to address this really quickly. When I was going to water tank B, it looked like there was a lot of damage there at the top. It's not, it's a little bit of a gouge. It's near the very top. It's not a, not a huge deal. We do need to top this tank off soon, sooner rather than later, because as you can see, there doesn't appear to be any rain in our future. Um, but we did top this one off the other day, and uh, I'll do that again once I'm done using the water today. So it goes from here, it all feeds one line, and they share a trench for a little bit and then it splits off. And then it goes all the way down the hill. Distance wise, it's about, I would say 300 feet. Vertical wise, it's probably, I don't know, 75 or 100. I'm not leaving, sweetie, don't worry. And uh, that blue patch you can see down there is our roof. It's the underlayment for our roof. We're gonna put the the metal roofing on as soon as I sell my current house. Okay, so that is the walkthrough of what we've got going on. Super lucky we were gifted a whole bunch of PVC pipe, which is what we've done all of this with, except for the three quarter inch line. We also still have to bury that trench. We got really lucky so far this winter because our pipes have not frozen and broken and we wanna prevent that in the future. So it's kind of this delicate balance of waiting until the ground dries out enough to fill in the trench with the uh, excavator versus getting bogged down and also kind of playing a gamble game with the, the weather and the freezing. But so far, so good. We were also gifted three inch line in addition to two inch line. That's gonna become the plumbing for the drains in the house, particularly from the toilets and the main trunk. Alrighty, see you soon.